Hey what's up guys, I'm gonna do a video about my knife and sword collection I'm gonna start with my newest edition, the newest katana that I got today um, I've been waiting for this one for two weeks and as you might have seen in the previous video a lot of the knives and swords I have are from either movies or games this one is from a movie this one is from the movie Sucker Punch um, which I thought it really had a really cool katana in it a nice latter handle but the really nice thing about this one is the blade I'm not sure how you will be able to see that on video, but I will be taking some pictures of this one as well uh, with my camera. But it's got some really nice etching and detailing on the blade. Um, it's got some grease on it, as you can see, so I need to spread it out a little even more. That's so that you can get it out of the handle really easy. On the handguard itself, it's got some really nice detailing as well. I will be taking pictures of that as well. Uh, and as I said, the handle feels really, really good. Oh, it does give us a bit, bit of grease. Um, but yeah, the weight and balance of this thing is wonderful. It's super super light. It's about um, 1.4 kilos, a little less. I'll put the exact numbers on the side as the exact length as well. Um, but yeah, it's a really really nice blade. As you can see on the back side it's really thick. But it can be, it gets quite sharp on the near. It's not sharpened at the moment because uh, you're not allowed to have them sharp. If you don't have the license for it, which I don't. So, but still, a really, really nice katana. Uh, I did have a katana before, but the really reason was that I wanted a new one was because that one broke. This is what is left of my old katana. So, um, in terms of total length, it used to be the same, about the same, it was about this, but it broke. Uh, I had it on, hanging off the wall like this on a nail um, and that looks really sleek when it's hanging on a wall like that but because it's balancing like that and that wall is right next to a door it, it got knocked off it fell but due to the handguard sticking out it fell and it snapped basically inside the handle um, now, traditionally katanas are made of high carbon steel, which is the reason why it could break this easily because high carbon steel is very hard and easy to keep sharp, but it's also very brittle. Like for example, other things made of carbon, carbon fiber, is really brittle as well, it breaks really easily. <coughs> um, and then there was a, another thing that made this katana really weak, and that was the sense that usually you've got the blade. Uh, which is basically a slab of steel and you hammer down the blade, the part, the end of the blade and you hammer it down to make a thin pin that goes inside the handle now this one wasn't uh, forged so this one wasn't uh, hammered into shape but this one was uh, grinded into shape so you actually got less steel there less dense steel than you normally would have so that makes it really weak at that point which is why it broke so easily now the way I repaired this uh, katana is by using the same technique used in kitchen knives. So I will uh, put up a picture of a kitchen knife. But basically what you do is you drill through the uh, blade or like the back side of the blade because it continues. Where you want the handle you drill through it. You put wood around it and then you put metal pins through the wood and the blade. Uh, then you glue it all together so it sticks together and you grind it so you get a nice a uh, clean soft handle uh, then obviously you've got the traditional wrappings of katana which uh, I didn't do good of a job of, job of but looks alright in my opinion um, now I used, it's got a thicker handle than usual because I used the uh, sheet of it to make the handle because that's already perfect wood that wraps around the blade perfectly so that's uh, a nice shape also it's not too big for my hand as you can see it fits really well and um, basically it's now a one-handed sword instead of a two-handed sword as a katana should be um, so yeah it's a bit it's even smaller than a regular uh, wakisachi would be so uh, yeah it's quite small now but I still really like it 
and due to the full thickness of the blade being actually in the handle it's a lot stronger now as well so it doesn't break that easily anymore so continuing the theme of Japanese themed weapons like the katanas I also have a set of tantos so Japanese knives These I got from my sister, for my 15th birthday, and they are really, really nice. Nice detailing on the hand guards, of course, and on the handles itself. Something I still really want to do is get a set of matching uh, tantos, like two small ones, then a wakizachi, which is the uh, smaller of the two uh, swords the samurai had, and then the katana, of course. That would be really, really nice. Now just a regular army knife, of course, a M9 bayonet from the United States. This is the rope cutting edition, as you can see, because it doesn't have um, those mean as saw saws on the back. I still plan on getting that one. Um, and as I said, it's a bayonet. So you can fix this to your weapon. And this is the American mounting mechanism, of course, so yeah, you could actually really fix this to like an M4. Now a nice thing, of course, about bayonets is that you can use them as a tool as well. Oh, let me actually show you. Um, as a wire cutter, for example, you've got this part here, which is a rough cut. You can put it on your handle and then use it as a wire cutter. I'm not sure if you can see that. But it's open there, you've got a wire cutter, really nice. And a nice thing about this handle, this carrying case, is it also comes with a sharpening stone on the back of it, so you can sharpen it on the go. You can put something in here, or you can even take this satchel off if you want. Really nice and easy. Obviously this one clips to your belt, and you can take the entire knife off and the guard off your belt really easily. Really nice. The machete of course that I brought from Guatemala when I went there, which is obviously where I'm partly from, so can't be a Latino without a machete. And obviously it's from the right brand as well, Imacasa from El Salvador, which is a Latin American brand of machetes and obviously you need one of those. This is a small one as you can see, it's only 40 centimeters in like, the blade is only 40 centimeters so it's really small. Uh, traditionally in my country I have a lot bigger machetes of course but yeah I had to go by plane there so I couldn't really bring those big ones back now in Guatemala I also picked, a, picked up a nice stone knife with a Maya temple on it really nice here's souvenirs of course uh, and some from Costa Rica some small <laughs> versions of commando knives so that was really cute I could not let them uh, stay there <laughs> I really want the pair of those and look the mini one is like super small it's ridiculous so yeah let's continue to the next set of swords which is the swords from the witcher I got my necklace off which is obviously the nice uh, necklace that Gerald has, I'll take a picture of it. So first things first, the silver sword, this, um, it's got some nice detailing, a nice pommel, detailed pommel, a twisted metal pommel, really nice. Oh, without hitting anything. <laughs> So the really nice thing about this blade for me is the three um, lines going across it. It's really nice. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. That looks really sick having those three... Uh, shit, I forgot what they're called in English, but it looks so good to have that up. You do get fingerprints really easily on this sword though. Um, it's a two-handed weapon. It's a lot longer than the katana. It's really nice. It's about 
115 centimeters. I'll put the exact lengths up in the video, of course, uh, and its weight as well. Uh, due to this length, it's a bit wobbly. So, because it's quite thin steel, it's I believe four millimeters thick. I'll measure that and put that up in the video. But it's still a really nice sword. The handle is a bit heavy and the pommel is a little too light in my opinion. So the balancing of this sword isn't that good. It leans a bit forward too much. Um, wait, let me put my finger on it. Yeah, about here, but a little further, but that's a little bit too much forward. Should be more about here near the handle. But yeah, still a really nice blade to have. And then obviously the Witcher has two swords, it also has a steel sword as well. It's got a nice curved steel so that they twisted this uh, metal here. For the handguard, I really love the detailing on that. It's got the nice uh, wolf logo, same as the necklace, pretty much on the back of the sword. These are obviously based on the game by the way and not on the, the series or the books. But yeah, that's really nice. blade of this one is pretty similar, but instead of having those three um, uh, grades, I'm, I really forgot what they're called, but instead of having that it only has one thick one. Um, the blade in itself and the balance due to this leaning less forward like the silver one is a lot better. This is a little bit heavier as well because it's quite a solid handle, a uh, pommel as you can see. So I love the balance of this one a lot more. But it's got the same problem that it's a bit wobbly due to being a very thin blade. But it's still, it's still really, really nice. Now this is genuine leather, and then we've got some steel on the here, which is really nice. The only thing I don't like is that the handles on both of them are some sort of polymer cable that is wrapped around it. Um, I will take pictures of this so you can see it up close, of course. And that's literally the only thing I don't like about them. Um, aside from this one not having the perfect balance, of course. Continuing with our team of swords. A regular, not from a game or movie, medieval sword. This is obviously a long sword. It's, uh, it's supposed to be used one-handed, but it can also be used two-handed. It can also be used uh, like with a second hand as assist. The balance of this is really nice. Um, this one doesn't have such a fancy blade as the other ones. But I really like this one because it's nice and simple. The pommel is really simple as well. But this one actually has a proper one, like a really heavy one. And I really like that. Wait, let me show you where the balance is about. So about there. But yeah, I really like this one. Nice leather handle, some detailing on it, but nothing too fancy. So that's nice, um, nice and simple, you know. Now from France, I've got one of these souvenir Lagioli knives. So Lagioli is the brand with the mosquito or whatever it is uh, on there. So like a fly or something. It's got a nice corkscrew. But yeah, like in, so in the southern parts of France, like most people walk with the big version of this knife. I still plan to get one of those. But yeah, I, I used to go to France a lot when I was a kid. But those Lagiola knives are like super expensive. They were like 100 euros easily for just the knife. Um, and as a kid, obviously I couldn't pay for it. So I just bought one of these uh, when I was a kid. Now, a nice, knife from Opinel, which I got from my mom, which is also a very well-known knife brand. Uh, yeah, pretty easy, simple to use knife. It's got this ring on so you can turn it and it's locked into place. Can't fold anymore. You turn it with the open side towards you and then you can fold again. Really nice, a lot of people carry these. Um, yeah, if they need a knife just as a tool. Where would I be without a trusty pocket knife? So obviously got one of those as well. Really nice. 
This one I actually got from uh, a former neighbor of ours, which was a hunter. So I'm really grateful for this knife. To me, it means a lot. Uh, so it's not that special of a pocket knife, but yeah, to me, it means a lot. And then the knife I use for all my unboxings, which is my flip knife. Really nice. Um, not that special, it's just cold steel. It's a knife from China, but it does the job, it's sharp. Uh, it flips out, you can flip it up really easily. And so yeah, it's really nice for that. I use it for unboxings. <laughs> no knife collection is complete without knives from Counter-Strike, which is one of the most famous uh, knife uh, game, like, which is a pretty famous shooter, which has a lot of knives in it. Uh, and a lot of people have knives of them, so. I just like knives, I don't even play the game myself. This is a Bowie knife with a really nice skin. As you can see, I really love the coatings on this. Super, super nice. Really durable blade as well. I really like it. And then we've got a couple of Karam bits, of course. So with a nice Celtic skin, I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. I'll take some pictures of them. A nice steel team, because I like raw steel as well. Black coated steel, really nice. A more oily rainbow team, really nice. A Galaxy themed one, wasn't really happy about this one, so I got another one. Um, because it's random, they literally spray this on. And that one turned out a lot nicer, in my opinion. Super, super nice. So these are my CSGO knives. I've done one before in a PlayStation build. Uh, if you see the video of that one, you already know this one. But it's got a knife in it, it's got a replica, a, ma a mini replica of the purple blade in there. Really nice edged blade and really nice detailing on both sides, it's ridiculous. And obviously, as I showed in that build, we have the full size Vorpal blade replica which also got that really nice edged blade. Um, yeah, really nice detailing. I'll be taking pictures of this. This thing is about as heavy as my longsword due to it being quite thick steel. It's ridiculous how heavy this thing is. But it's just about, uh, I think over a kilo it weighs. Zoom. Last but not least, one of the knives I have is from uh, Lord of the Rings which is the knife of Aragorn, which is a really knife, a nice knife, obviously axed as well as you can see on both sides, really nice. I still plan on getting more uh, knives and swords from the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, but yeah, I still need to get those, obviously. <laughs> I only have one of them at the moment. So yeah, that's pretty much my knife and sword collection video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be adding more swords and knives in the future of course, um, so when I've got a lot more than I have now, I'll do an update video. <laughs>